okay welcome to chemistry classes in this video we have to discuss here uh, purification of colloid purification of colloid already we discussed here preparation of colloid uh, colloidal particles catalysis everything okay so here we have to focus here purification of colloid and related things okay so here purification of colloid first one we have to understand here dialysis dialysis okay so dialysis here uh, in this process we will take we will take colloid in a container okay the edge of this container or uh, this container act as a uh, semi permeable membrane or you can say dialyzing membrane dialyzing membrane dialyzing membrane means this membrane okay the edge of this container it at uh, it pass water and dissolved impurities but do not pass but do not pass salt particles or you can say colloidal particles okay so we will pass water continuously here from the bottom part of this container okay so here this water this water passing through the container which contain uh, colloidal particles okay so water will pass also dissolved impurities also passing through the water okay so water and dissolved impurities or you can say crystalloid we can collect outside and we will obtain pure colloid over here this method is called dialysis okay so here actually diffusion of water happen diffusion of water water will be diffusing uh, through this semi permeable membrane and water uh, water collect all dissolved impurities away from this container this method is called dialysis Clear. So we discussed first method to purify colloid it is it is dialysis next one we have to discuss here second method it is electrodialysis we know dialysis mean all dissolved impurities pass it will pass from the colloidal solution with water okay we can accelerate this process by applying electrodes see here here two electrode positive electrode and positive and negative electrodes are applied so here here this is colloidal solution this colloidal solution which contain many impurities okay many impurities charged impurities positively and negatively charged impurities okay and we can migrate we can migrate this ions from this colloidal solution by applying electrode okay after applying electrode positively charged positively charged impurities will move towards this electrode and negatively charged impurities will move towards this electrode okay so dialysis process can be accelerated by applying electrode this process is called electrodialysis electrodialysis mean the dialysis process can be accelerated by applying electrodes this process is called electrodialysis electrodialysis okay and here we have to understand we have to understand here uh, in our in our body blood blood act as a colloid blood is a good example for colloid okay also you know in our body kidneys kidney it helps to purify blood okay so here kidneys are acting as a dialyzer it it act as a dialyzer it purify blood okay also artificial kidneys artificial kidneys are uh, helping to purify blood okay so artificial kidneys are machine it working based on the principle electrodialysis okay artificial kidneys are the machine it working on the principle uh, dialysis clear colloid next one we have to understand here ultra filtration ultra filtration ultra filtration mean we will conduct a filtration we will conduct filtration here using a specially prepared filter we will use a specially prepared filter to conduct filtration of colloidal solution and this specially made filter it will pass solvent dissolve the impurities everything except colloidal particle so we will conduct filtration with help of specially prepared filter it will pass 
dissolved impurities solvent all impurities except solvent sorry except colloidal particle this process is called ultra filtration ultra filtration for ultra filtration here uh, we can here I told you we will use specially prepared filter we can control the size we can control the size of the pores of ultra ultra filter uh, ultra filters using colloidion colloidion or gelatin solution so I told you here here a specially prepared filters or filter paper we will use to filter colloidal solution okay so here it will pass all impurities solvent dissolved solute everything but here colloidal particles colloidal particle will stay over here here only colloidal particle rest everything will come down this process is called ultra filtration we can control the pores we can control the pores of this this filter okay by uh, by pouring here gelatin solution before before adding colloidal solution we have to put here gelatin solution okay or we have to put here colloidion 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 mean four percentage of nitrocellulose in a in absolute alcohol and either four percentage of nitrocellulose mixing with mixture of uh, absolute alcohol and ether. This mixture is called colloidion. This colloidion or gelatin solution it helps to control the size of pores of ultra filters. Okay, so this process is called ultra filtration. So we discussed here three methods to purify colloidal solution: dialysis, uh, electrodialysis, and third one. Third one here ultra filtration these are the methods to purify colloidal uh, colloidal solution and we have to discuss here tyndall effect tyndall effect tyndall effect means after passing a beam of light through colloidal solution the light of beam will be scattered and the path of light through the colloidal solution visible this process is called tyndall effect Tyndall effect means after passing a beam of light, this beam of light will be scattered in colloidal solution and the path of beam through the colloidal solution is visible. This process is called Tyndall effect. Look here to one experiment. Look here one experiment. A beam of light passed through true solution and a colloidal solution true solution and colloidal solution we know the size of the particles in true solution very small that's why scattering of light do not happen in true solution that's why the path of light in true solution not visible but in colloidal solution size of the particle is higher size of the particles in colloidal solution is higher so scattering happen and size of the particles size of the particles sorry the path of light in colloidal solution is visible okay this process is called tyndall effect so here scattering of light happen scattering of light will be happen after passing light after passing a beam of light through a colloidal solution okay next one we have to understand here what are the condition for tyndall effect uh, Tyndall effect always not happen in colloidal solution. There are some condition. Okay, the size of the colloidal solutions, the size of dispersed phase or size of colloidal particle not much smaller. There should be a considerable size, considerable size of the colloidal particle to scatter the light. Then only the path of light visible, always not visible. Okay, that is one condition. Second condition, there must be greater difference in, re in refractive index of dispersed phase and a dispersed medium. We already discussed dispersed phase and dispersed medium. Okay, in a colloidal solution, there is dispersed phase and dispersed medium. Okay, their refractive index uh, between refractive index between dispersed phase and dispersed medium should be much different. 
then only then only uh, Tyndall effect happen so these are the two condition for Tyndall effect the size of the particles not much smaller the refractive index must be greater different okay the refractive index of dispersed phase and dispersed medium must be greater different these are the two condition for Tyndall effect okay after this we have to discuss here what is the important of what are the importance of this Tyndall effect okay here was first one this Tyndall effect help us to understand which one is true solution which one is colloid this is the first first uh, important or first application okay so this Tyndall effect help us to understand or help us to classify true solution and colloidal solution second one this Tyndall effect this process this process used in used to set up an uh, apparatus called uh, ultra microscope okay to set up this microscope ultra microscope uh, this principle happened here Tyndall effect this process happened in uh, in this to set up this uh, instrument or you can say apparatus ultra microscope okay so these are the importance and those two are the condition for Tyndall effect Tyndall effect means scattering of beam of light after passing through the colloidal solution okay we discuss Tyndall effect after Tyndall effect we have to discuss here colors of colloidal solution the factors which depends on the uh, colloidal solution there are several factors which depends on uh, colors of colloidal solution here here look here uh, after passing a beam of light through colloidal solution we know it will scatter okay it will scatter into different beams it will scatter okay so here here the colors of colloidal solution depends on uh, it depends on the size and nature of colloidal particles the uh, one of the factor which depends on the color color of colloidal solution uh, size and nature what is the size of the colloidal particle and nature of the colloidal particle okay depends on this so, uh, colors of colloidal solution will be changed okay and another one we have to say the wavelength of light scattered by dispersed waves the uh, wavelength wavelength of uh, scattered light i told you here when you pass beam of light through colloidal solution it will be scattered so the the wavelength of scattered light wavelength of scattered light depends on colors of colloidal solution you understand and another one here after scattering after scattering scattering which color received by observer look here uh, one person uh, observing this colloidal solution from this direction okay after scattering uh, several lights are formed okay several light rays are formed okay so one of the light ray came to this observer okay so the light ray observed by receiver or light rays which observed by sorry light rays received by this observer it depends on the colloidal solution which depends on the colors of colloidal solution so these are the three factors which depends on the colors of colloidal solution one of the factor size size of the colloidal particle of light okay wavelength of light which is scattered and another one the light scattered there are many light rays scattered so which ray observed or which ray received by observer these are the several factors which depends on the colors of colloidal solution
okay next one we have to discuss here electrical properties of colloids we already discussed physical properties of colloids okay next one we have to discuss here electrical properties of colloid electrical properties of colloid first one we have to discuss here charges of colloid colloidal particles colloidal particles shows charges okay positive charge or negative charge colloidal particles have positive charge or negative charge so first we have to understand uh, which type of colloid showing positive charge which type of colloid showing negative charge so look here uh, colloid like uh, metal uh, hydrated metal oxide hydrated metal oxide and metal oxide this type of colloid showing uh, positive charge look here hydrated metal oxide hydrated metal oxide mean aluminium oxide with water molecule chromium oxide with water molecule iron oxide with water molecule these are example for hydrated metal oxide hydrated metal oxide showing positive charge okay similarly uh, i told you metal oxide metal oxide salt here hydrated metal oxide mean hydrated metal oxide salt okay uh, colloidal solution which containing uh, metal oxide hydrated metal oxide they showing positive charge similarly metal oxide salt metal oxide colloidal solution they showing positive charge another one another one basic dyes we know dyes okay dyes okay there are two different types of dyes basic dyes and acidic dyes okay so basic dyes coming under positively charged salts so these are the examples for these are the example for uh, positively charged colloids okay Me hydrated metal oxide metal oxide salt and basic dyes basic dyes mean methylene blue methylene blue hemoglobin hemoglobin mean blood these are coming uh, basic dyes and this basic dyes are example for positively charged salts positively charged salt after this next one we have to discuss here negatively charged salt negatively charged salt so here negatively charged salt mean metal salts metal sulfide salt acidic dyes these are example for uh, negatively charged salt okay so here uh, metal metallic sulfide and metal salt okay metal salt silver gold platinum silver gold platinum salts are example for metal salts they are negatively charged salts and another one metallic sulfide metallic sulfide example arsenic sulfide antimony sulfide cadmium sulfide okay so metal uh, metal salt metallic sulfide salt these are example for negatively charged salt also i told you acidic dyes acidic dyes acidic dyes eosine eosine uh, congo red congo red eosine these are example for acidic dyes and these are example for negatively charged salt okay another example for negatively charged salt gum gelatin starch these are example for these are example for negatively charged salt okay gum gum starch gelatin clay and charcoal all this coming in negatively charged salt here hydrated metal oxide and metal oxide basic dye here metal salt and metal sulfide salt here acidic acidic dyes also remember here starch gum gelatin clay and charcoal clear and we have to discuss here charge on colloid we discussed uh, colloidal particles showing or colloids showing positive charge or negative charge okay next one we have to discuss here origin of this charge how colloidal particles or how colloids getting charged okay so here the reason for this uh, charge of the colloidal solution is preferential adsorption preferential adsorption mean colloids colloidal solution adsorb ions from the from the dispersed medium 
ഓക്കെ കൊളോയിഡൽ പാർട്ടിക്കിൾസ് വിൽ അഡ്സോർബ് അയോൺസ് പോസിറ്റീവ് ചാർജ് പോസിറ്റീവ്ലി ചാർജ്ഡ് അയോൺസ് ഓർ നെഗറ്റീവ്ലി ചാർജ്ഡ് അയോൺസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദിസ് കൊളോയിഡ്സ് ഗെറ്റിംഗ് ചാർജ് സി ഹിയർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ സി ഹിയർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഐ ടോൾ യു ഹിയർ ഐ ടോൾ യു ഹിയർ കൊളോയിഡൽ പാർട്ടിക്കിൾസ് അഡ്സോർബിംഗ് അയോൺസ് പോസിറ്റീവ്ലി ചാർജ്ഡ് അയോൺസ് ഓർ നെഗറ്റീവ്ലി ചാർജ്ഡ് അയോൺസ് ഫ്രം ദി ഡിസ്പേഴ്സ്ഡ് മീഡിയം that's why colloids getting charged example for this look here we we know silver nitrate when you mix silver nitrate and potassium iodide silver iodide will be the precipitate when you mix silver nitrate and potassium iodide silver iodide will be the precipitate okay i given two case okay here two case silver nitrate added to potassium iodide silver iodide is the precipitate second case potassium iodide added to silver nitrate see here difference in first case silver nitrate added to potassium iodide we added to potassium iodide second case potassium i potassium iodide take potassium iodide and add it to silver nitrate okay so when you when you uh, when you mix when you add silver nitrate into potassium iodide you know potassium iodide there is k plus and i minus so there will be i minus there will be i minus so uh, it will silver iodide precipitate will adsorb i minus and it form negatively charged salt or you can say negatively charged colloidal solution formed here second case here potassium iodide added to silver nitrate so silver nitrate there is silver so in this medium there is ag plus silver okay so here the precipitate formed agi it will adsorb it will adsorb ag plus from the solution from the medium and here a positively charged positively charged uh, sol or positively charged colloidal solution formed clear so here preferential adsorption mean uh, depends on the situation colloidal solution colloidal particles adsorb ions depends on the situation so here two different situation two different types of uh, charge two different charge charged uh, colloidal solution formed okay see here another example ferric chloride added to hot water when you add fecl3 to hot water positively charged the salt formed by adsorption of fe3 plus okay okay ferric chloride added to hot water and here here positively charged colloidal solution formed by adsorption of fe3 plus okay here positively charged colloidal solution formed okay similarly when you add ferric chloride into aqueous naoh a negatively charged salt formed okay ferric chloride added to uh, aqueous sodium hydroxide negatively charged salt formed by adsorption of oh minus so in this case negatively charged colloidal solution here in this case positively charged colloidal solution you are adding same thing ferric chloride okay you are adding ferric chloride but the situation different here you added to hot water here you added to aqueous naoh so depends on the situation colloidal solution colloidal particle adsorb different type of ions and form a positively charged colloidal solution or negatively charged colloidal solution okay okay next one we have to discuss here helmholtz double layer helmholtz double layer okay to discuss this let's see here we discussed before formation of charged colloid okay when you add silver nitrate to potassium iodide silver iodide will be formed and silver iodide and this precipitate will adsorb negatively charged iodide iodine and it form a negatively charged colloidal solution negatively charged colloidal solution okay we discussed already this look here you have a colloidal solution and there is negatively charged colloidal particle so of course this negatively charged colloidal particle it will attract it will attract counter ions 
counter ions mean here negatively charged colloidal particle attract positively charged particles positively charged ions okay this negatively charged uh, negatively charged colloidal particles it attract positively charged colloidal particles or positively charged ions so here which one is positively charged ions we have to look we have to focus on ag plus and i i minus because this is the this is the ions forming precipitate okay there is k plus and no3 minus it will be unionized form but ag plus and i minus it form precipitate okay so here negatively charged colloidal particle it will attract its counter ion it will attract positively charged ion it will attract positively charged ions clear so look here this is already here this is already here and it will attract its counter ions okay now see here this is i am showing here this is one container okay and this this negatively charged one this negative charge it indicate it indicate this one agi i minus okay agi i minus this negative charge it's mean these are the negatively charged colloidal particle and it will attract its counter ions it will attract positively charged ag plus this one i am showing here positive charge so this negative charge means negatively charged colloidal particle agi i minus this is negative charge and this positive charge indicate it will attract its counter ion here counter ion ag plus okay also look here here this is the fixed layer this is the colloidal particle actual colloidal particle negatively charged colloid colloidal particle okay so this is fixed layer this is fixed layer okay and here it will attract its counter ions ag plus okay this is ag plus next here it will be i minus again ag plus so from here from uh, this part we can say it is movable it is fixed cannot move not moving it is a colloidal particle okay but this one this one it can move okay so we can say it is diffused layer this is fixed layer and this is movable part so we have to say it is diffused layer okay fixed layer and a diffused layer so here helmholtz double layer this is we are discussing here helmholtz double layer so helmholtz double layer mean combination of two layers of opposite charge okay combination of two layers of opposite charge around the colloidal particles combos combos in a combination combination of two opposite charge of colloidal particles okay this combination is called helmholtz double layer clear so there is two opposite charge so there will be there will be uh, one potential difference this potential difference is called zeta potential you know if there is two opposite charge there will be a potential difference here there is fixed layer and this is movable layer okay so two different charged layers are staying here very near so there will be a potential difference and this potential difference is called zeta potential zeta potential clear so here we discussed here we discuss uh, colloidal particles getting charged so this charged colloidal particles will attract its counter ions okay that's why here in the container there will be two different layer fixed layer and diffused layer fixed layer mean the charge of colloidal particles okay uh, and a diffused layer or movable layer it formed by attraction of counter ions okay after that we discussed here zeta potential D zeta potential mean potential difference between uh, two opposite charged layers this potential difference is called zeta potential okay so here these two layers are called helmholtz double layer combination of two layers of opposite charge around the colloidal particles called helmholtz double layer 
okay next one we have to discuss here electrophoresis electrophoresis okay so here let us see here electrophoresis electrophoresis mean take colloidal solution and we will we will insert oppositely charged electrode we will insert cathode and anode okay we know colloidal solution which contain charged particles so we can we can the we can accelerate the movement of ions towards electrode by applying electricity okay the movement of ions towards oppositely charged electrode this movement of ions are called electrophoresis electrophoresis mean movement of ions towards oppositely charged electrode okay imagine this is one colloidal solution okay so if there is positive and negatively charged particles the positive charged particles will move positive charged particles will move towards negatively charged electrode okay if there is any negatively charged particle this negatively charged particle move towards positively charged electrode this movement of ions towards electrode this process is called electrophoresis electrophoresis okay and after that we have to discuss here electroosmosis during electrophoresis by applying suitable condition we can stop the movement of ions towards the particles we can stop the movement of particles charged particles towards electrode instead of instead of particles instead of dispersed phase dispersed medium will be moved towards towards electrode this process is called electroosmosis electroosmosis means by applying suitable condition in electrophoresis we can stop the movement of ions towards electrode instead of ions here dispersed medium ions mean particles mean dispersed phase dispersed phase not moving dispersed medium will move okay this movement of medium this movement of dispersed medium towards electrode this process is called electroosmosis okay so we discuss here electrophoresis and electroosmosis clear and here this electrophoresis it is it is one it it giving one evidence uh, it giving one evidence that the colloidal solution which contain charged particles okay so electrophoresis confirming the existence of charged particles Be okay so colloidal particles colloidal solution there is positively charged particles also negatively charged particle or maybe there is only positive charged particle or only negatively charged particles that's why uh, uh, here electrophoresis takes place okay we discuss here coagulation of leophobic colloid we discuss four method fifth method to coagulate leophobic colloid fifth method by adding suitable electrolyte addition of large amount of electrolyte into leophobic colloid it causes precipitation okay after addition of large amount of electrolyte electrolyte which which contain charged particles this charged ions interact with the colloidal particles okay colloidal particles with the opposite charge it will interact with electrolyte and precipitation will happen okay so look here uh, look here here we have to understand coagulating ion so i told you here i told you here electrolyte which consists of ions this ions will interact with oppositely charged colloidal particle and the coagulation happen so ions which cause coagulation electrolyte which contains ions that ion causing uh, precipitation or coagulation such type of ions present in electrolyte such type of ions are called coagulating ion coagulating ion or you can say flocculating ion flocculating ion mean ion which present in the electrolyte okay not in colloids okay ions which present in electrolyte which cause precipitation such type of ions are called such type of ions are called flocculating ion or coagulating ion look here here uh this are the different example you know electrolyte which contain positively charged ions it will coagulate negatively charged colloidal particle okay 
electrolyte which contain negatively charged ions it will it will coagulate positively charged colloidal particle means opposite charge always interact each other and precipitation happen okay also you have to understand here these are the different type of ions in the electrolyte okay flocculating ions with a higher valency have higher power high power to coagulate colloidal particles okay so here you have different type of positively charged ions so here this is the higher valency so ion with a higher valency have higher power high power to coagulate okay this is called hardy shells rule hardy shells rule okay according to hardy shells rule here these are negatively charged ions okay this is the ions with a higher valency and a higher coagulating power okay all these are negatively charged ions it will coagulate positively charged colloidal particle so ions with higher valency it has high tendency high power to coagulate positively charged positively charged colloidal particle that's here hardy shells rule okay greater the valency of flocculating ion added greater its power to cause precipitation okay that's mean uh, the ion flocculating ion with a higher valency has high power to coagulate colloidal particle this is hardy shells rule you understand and here after this last point here we have to discuss in this slide we have to discuss here uh we have to discuss here coagulating value coagulating value coagulating value mean uh the minimum concentration the minimum concentration of electrolyte in millimole per liter of per liter required to cause precipitation okay you have 1 liter of colloidal solution you want to precipitate 1 liter of colloidal solution so how much uh the minimum concentration of electrolyte in millimole this minimum concentration of electrolyte in millimole this is called coagulating value okay coagulating value mean the minimum concentration of an electrolyte in millimole per liter of colloidal solution to cause precipitation this minimum concentration of an electrolyte in millimole this is called this is called coagulating value coagulating value so here we discussed we discussed by adding large amount of electrolyte this electrolyte contain ions this ion will interact with oppositely charged colloidal particle and coagulation happen okay <clears throat> the ion which cause uh, the ion which present in electrolyte also it cause coagulation called uh, flocculating ion the ion with a higher valency high power to coagulate okay after that we discuss uh, coagulating value coagulating value mean the minimum concentration the minimum concentration of an electrolyte in millimole per liter to coagulate a particular co uh, colloidal solution it is called coagulating value next one we have to discuss here coagulation of lyophilic colloid coagulation of lyophobic colloid we discuss next one we have to discuss here coagulation of lyophilic colloid okay lyophilic colloid so there are two methods to coagulate lyophilic colloid first one adding suitable electrolyte addition of suitable electrolyte second one addition of suitable solvent second method to coagulate uh lyophilic colloid addition of suitable solvent example for suitable solvent acetone alcohol etc after addition of suitable solvent like alcohol or acetone dehydration of dispersed phase happen dehydration of dispersed phase okay after this process we will add few quantity of electrolyte okay then colloidal particle get precipitated this is the two methods to uh, coagulate lyophilic colloid first one i told you addition of uh, addition of electrolyte second one addition of suitable solvent example for suitable solvent alcohol or acetone 
after addition of after addition of alcohol or acetone see here dehydration of dispersed phase happen okay after dehydration of dispersed phase <coughs> we will add we will add suitable electrolyte after addition of small quantity of electrolyte here colloidal particles will be precipitated okay so these are the different methods to coagulate leophilic colloid and leophobic colloid okay so these are the things we are discussing in this video rest of the parts we will discuss last part of this chapter okay last part of this chapter one more video you can watch it later clear